Wow, and welcome back to Sports on Tap, part of the NEO Sports Insiders Network, NEOSportsInsiders.com. I'm Rob uh, Troutman. We have Ed Dick, Sean Duffy, Josh Jeffy controlling our audio. Unfortunately. <laughs> Sound engineer to the stars, folks. I'll tell you what, this guy does it all. Does no. he? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, I do it all, but not very well. <laughs> You're a master of all. Well, guys, we're going to switch from, you know, the NFL mock draft to uh, talking a little Ohio high school sports. Um, and there are some division changes um, that have recently happened, Ed, that, you know, I, I didn't even know was even being talked about at this point in time. You know, they're talking about regions and divisions. Um, some teams are going to be moving from certain places. Why don't you break it down and, and tell everyone what's going on with uh, some different changes here? Absolutely. So basically what's going on is uh, Division One for the last three years has been two divisions of 36 teams apiece. Uh, so you have a total of 72 teams in Division One. As you guys uh, well remember that they separated the the highest enrollment of schools into their own division, you know, Division One, and just bumped everybody else down. Um, so when they first drew this out, they – you know, if you just go strictly based on the old maps that they that they would use, um, you know, to determine what these regions were, it was a start. It was a very uh, it was relatively lopsided uh, as far as where divisions, you know, how many schools would be in each region, and um, it, it just ended up not being a way at the time to be able to figure it out. So, you know, they they basically split the state in half and said, you know, upper division or upper schools, you guys are region one, lower division or lower or southern schools, you're region two and said that and, and, and went out in their merry way. However, uh, they want to return to back to a re more of a regional format where you do have four regions and your regional championship constitutes a trip to the state semifinals instead of just becoming the state semifinals. Um, so with that, they have divided up the 72 schools back into four regions. Now, the difference between what it is now and what it wasn't before is these these schools were normally, at least in the in the in region one territory, these schools were never in the same region to begin with. And uh, because only 22 out of the 88 counties in Ohio have division one schools, they kind of had to do a little uh, gerrymandering to make sure they were able to get their uh, get their numbers right. So, Region One, which nor which normally houses your your Cleveland area schools, your mentors, your Euclids, your you know schools like that, now houses schools from Lorain County, Medina County, Lucas County, Hancock County, Union County, Delaware County, and Licking County, and the most western parts of Cuyahoga County. So. Schools that are around here that you guys would, that most people would be more familiar with would be my beloved Brunswick Blue Devils, <laughs> the Illyria Pioneers, the Finley, uh, Finley. I believe they're the Oilers out there. Yep. Oh, nice job, Ed. We have three different Olin Tangies hanging out down here. Lewis Center. Lewis Center. Powell. Lewis Center was mentioned twice on here. Good no, job. it's Lewis Center, Olin, Olin Tangy, Orange. Orange, that's right. So you have three different Olin Tangy schools, the Lorraine Titans, the Medina Battle and Bees, the North Royalton Bears, Bears, Stop Bears. the Parma Redmen, and the Stronsville Mustangs, along with both Westervilles and the two Toledo teams. Region 2 contains all the Cleveland schools. St. Ignatius. The beast of a region. Shaker Heights. St. Ed's. It was in Lakewood. Solon. Stowe. Cleveland Roads. Cleveland John Marshall. Cleveland Heights. Berea Mid Park. Austintown Fitch. Mentor. Lakewood. Euclid. Cuyahoga Falls. Canton McKinley. And North Canton Hoover. I um, don't believe it left anybody out there. Maslin but Jackson. And Maslin Jackson. Thank you very much on that. So, and I'll, I'm going to defer to the Duff over here for the lower divisions because uh, he is from the from the south down there. So, um, just a quick, uh, you know, my quick analysis of that is uh, Region 2, not much change there. Those schools usually play each other that really anyways. Um, 
and those are very, very uh, hotly contested uh, matchups there as well. So you don't really see too much of a change there. Um, region one is, uh, at least from the northern aspect of it, is a is a major change. Um, you have a potential matchup between Brunswick and um, and one of the Olin Tangies. Um, actually, oddly enough, uh, Coach Luke Beal's uh, brother-in-law uh, is uh, Mark Solis, our, our old buddy from uh, Elyria, Lorraine, and Twinsburg. is one of the, is the coach uh, for one of the Olin Tangies down there. So it'd be interesting to see a playoff matchup down, uh, you know, in one of those uh, respective uh, rounds there. But um, you know, the Toledo schools they've kind of been always hanging out in the Brunswick district or Brunswick region. But the Westerville schools is, is a new addition to the area as well. So um, lots of change in Region One and uh, a little bit in Region Two, but not a whole lot. Um, Duff, what about Region 3 and Region 4? Well, I think before I get into Region 3 and Region 4, to kind of reiterate what Ed's saying is before, for the last three years, this state is, from a Division One standpoint, has been split north versus south. Northern teams is one region. Southern teams is another the region. The Yanks versus the Rams. Essentially, our own version <laughs> of the Civil War. What they did was they ended up saying, okay, we want to, like Ed said, we want to return it to a more regional feel because every other division, two through seven or six, seven. has – Four regions. Division one doesn't. Now, it's difficult because again, when you go by attendance, there's not. It's not as. It doesn't. It doesn't break up as e- as evenly as some of the other regions do. Um, so they kind of had to make some executive decisions here. The more I read about it, the more I look at the regions. I'm thinking, it probably wasn't. It's not going to be perfect because again. There's like you said, there's only a, a certain number of counties that have Division One schools. So, in order for it to be competitive and as balanced as possible, some of the schools that normally wouldn't have been in the divisions that we're used to over the past three years and even longer are now coming in. I think that breeds diversity and talent. It also allows for a more regional concept. Hey, we were the best in Region One. We were the best in Region Two. Let's get together and see who's the best of all these four region championships. Now, going into Region 3, this is where you're seeing the Southern teams and how they broke those Southern teams up. Um, Region 3 consists of a lot of Columbus teams with some Dayton teams being brought into the mix. Um, Specifically, we have Columbus Westland, Dublin Kaufman, Gehanna Lincoln, Grove City, Grove City Central, Hilliard Darby, Hilliard Bradley, Hilliard Davidson. Um, we also have Pickerington Central, Pickerington North, Reynoldsburg, and Thomas Worthington, along with Upper Arlington. Those are typical Cincinnati, or I'm sorry, Columbus schools. Huber Heights, Wayne, right as well. As I was getting to that, they're bringing some uh, of the Dayton schools in that were mostly associated with the the Dayton area. Your powerhouses such as Huber Heights, Wayne, Kettering, Fairmont, uh, Springfield, um, and even Lancaster from the southern area are teams that normally probably w- would have played each other. And, again, you have to remember, these teams would have played each other in the playoffs anyway. It's just now separating them to where we can set ourselves up for maybe a different kind of matchup. Moving to Region 4, we see that a lot of the Cincinnati schools that we all know, Archbishop Moeller, Cincinnati Colerain, Elder, Oak Hills, Cincinnati St. Xavier, Sycamore, Western Hills, um, Hamilton, Lebanon, Liberty Township, Lakota East, Mason, Middletown, Milford, Springboro, Westchester, Lakota West. These are a lot of your southern, since southwestern teams. Now you can also bring in teams like Centerville or teams like Clayton Northmont, um, teams like, uh, I believe I said Milford already, and Springboro. These are teams that are, again, I think they kind of split Montgomery County diagonally and said, okay, the top portion go to the, for lack of a better word, Columbus region. The, the the bottom portion of that county goes to the Cincinnati region, which I think is great because if you look at these two regions, you have a potential state semifinal matchup of a Centerville versus oh, a, a, a Huber Heights Wayne or a Hilliard Darby or Davidson versus a Cincinnati St. Xavier. So we're not seeing like like years past where it's Cincinnati versus two Cincinnati teams playing for the right to play to, you know, uh, to Cleveland Catholic schools. It, I think it opens up a little bit more diversity for the public schools in this division that's been so readily dominated from a sta- from a championship standpoint from the Catholic schools, whether it be from the southern part of the state and the northern part of the state. And I also think it breeds a lot of competition now that we may not have seen. I mean, look, for a long time, Huber Heights Wing would have to beat 
Centerville to get in the playoffs. That may not be the issue, but they could become a really good team. And I'm using that because I'm 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 able to pull from that because those are really two big powerhouses in the Dayton area that sometimes used to get overshadowed by your San Xavier's or your Molers or your Coal Range or things like that, where it's it's tougher for those teams to break out because they as soon as they they kill each other in the regular season and they ha- and they end up running into a buzzsaw. I also like what you one of the more I look at regions one and two. I mean, Region Two is a super beast right now. Yeah, we like if, I, if, I'm a, if I'm a head coach, that region. <laughs> yeah. if I'm a head coach, I'm thinking, wow, just to get through that region. I mean, it, what is it? Top eight in the region make the playoffs. I'm, is that that's true? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, absolutely. Really, you could St. Ignatius, St. Ed's. I mean, North Kent, Hoover. I we mean, we should um, when it gets closer to the season, we'll have to talk with uh, new Bria Mar- uh, Bria Mid Park head coach John yeah. Hunick. Friend of show. Friend of show. Yeah. See how he likes Boom. about being in uh, Region 2. Um, that's going to be a, a very <laughs> – welcome, yeah. welcome to your first it, head coach It's your game. first year. In order to make it through the playoffs, you got to be not only St. Ignatius, maybe St. Ed's too. But knowing John a little bit from w- what we got to know of him being on the show, I think he's really excited for that challenge. Yeah. Because, you know, he was at St. Ed's for five years, and he went down to uh, uh, Maslin there for a while. Uh, for one year, so he's no stranger to being in the limelight, and I see uh, this is a perfect challenge. I think it's just uh, another step for him onto getting his team, the culture that he wants to establish there in Bria Mid Park. I think it's going to be good for him. And in Region One, I mean, obviously it helps out a team like Strongsville. Um, you know, Strongsville no longer needs to go through this through the Cleveland schools. That that's been the Cleveland schools have pretty much been the bane of their existence for. As long as I can remember watching high school football, um, they wow. they've always had end up having to run into into St. Ignatius usually in the playoffs or um, or a Solon or a team that they just weren't able to get by. And I, I, not that these teams are. I mean, the Westerville schools are obviously very good. The Olin Sandy school is also very good. Um, Whitmer is a, is a beast up in the Toledo area, but a school like Strongsville will really benefit from not having to deal with the Cuyahoga County schools anymore. And, um, you know, they were one of the schools from division from Cuyahoga County that were able to sneak into region one there along with Parma and North Royalton, just based on their location. So yeah, uh, and that's, that's a big, uh, I think that's a big benefit to the, to the Mustangs there. And I think the big point again is, is I, I really think this move was, and, and again, it caught us all by surprise because we, we had gotten so used to the two region division ones, um, playoff bracket because we're, I mean, that's just the way it's been for the last three years. I think it was surprising that they moved to this region. I, I don't, I don't see it being a huge problem. Um, obviously there's probably some coaches that said, man, if you're in region two, you're probably not exactly unless you're like coming, returning a great team. But again, it's, it's just a tough division to get in. So, but again, it, it's not taking away from any other team. It's not saying that, you know, region one is going to always have less than, region two no it's just saying that it makes it maybe a little bit easier for those for those teams to get playoff opportunities and become those exciting teams now granted it's still the same number of teams make the playoffs each year that's not changing it's just maybe a it's a different makeup of how they go through the playoff process which makes it fun not only for the kids that are playing but also the fans who follow the sport like we do. I mean, we, we talk about it every week. So, I mean, now it creates a situation where it used to be the top 16 in the north and the top 16 in the south get together and play, and there, and that was it. Now it's like, well, now there's a game here. Now there's something that we can look at and say, hey, there's a good matchup coming in because they need to get into the eighth seat and eighth spot in Region 1 or, you know, eighth spot in Region 3 is up for grabs because these two teams are playing the t- tonight. You know, it used to be, hey, if you made the top 16 in the south and in the north, you're in the playoffs one way or the other, and then we'll figure it out from there. So now it adds a little bit of drama to the regular season that the other schools have. We spent a lot of time last year talking about, you know, towards the end of that season, how a lot of these teams needed to take their own destiny in hands and win these games. We said the same thing for the Division ones, but it really was more about seeding rather than making the playoffs altogether. Well, and I think you'll, what you'll see, too, is a lot – you're not going to see – uh, you're not going to see a fringe, uh, a barely 500 team make the playoffs anymore. I think you're going to see a, you're going to need to get at least six to seven wins to make the playoffs in your region. Um, you know, we had you know we had some situations, you know, at least at Brunswick where you know five and five, six and four, we were able to get in, but we were a number 15 seed. 
So that means we had to play Mentor the first year we made the playoffs under Coach Beal, and then St. Ed's the second year we made the playoffs under Coach Beal. Um, and both of those games admittedly did not go very well. <laughs> but I think that's you're going to eliminate that a little bit by not you know kind of eliminating that ma- that March Madness mentality where in a state tournament, at least in a football tournament, where you actually have to qualify to make the playoffs. You might have more of a puncher's chance if you're a seven going against a two or an eight going against a one instead of a 15 going against a two or a 16 going against a one. You know, I had the chance to cover Berea Mid Park a lot last year. What do you think uh, the difference is? You know, Berea Mid Park plays teams like Avon, Avon Lake, um, you know, and some schools that are not in a region one, two, three, or four. They're in, you know, region six. Do you think them being in a tough region of Region 2 with St. Ed's, Ignatius, do you think that could hurt them a little bit playing teams like, you know, Avon's obviously a really good team, um, and and there's a bunch of other teams there, Olmstead Falls, North Ridgeville, and teams like that, but, you know, now they're in a Region 2, which, you know, you look at, it's just stacked. Can that hurt them, um, you know, being in a a different conference or division now? I don't because that conference is very strong. If they win, they'll get in. Um, some some conferences aren't like that, where if you win your conference, you might sneak into the playoffs. You might be a, you might not be able to host. Berea Mid Park plays the the Midviews, the Avon, the Avon yeah. Lakes. You know they they have a very very good conference that they play in. So I don't think they're I don't think a team like that will get a, will be affected. If if nothing else, I think their margin of error is lower now because they can't afford to sneak into the play. They won't be able to afford to sneak in the playoffs with six to seven wins. They'll probably need to win eight games. And that conference, you play nine conference games. You only play one on-conference game, and then you play nine conference games. So um, I, I think Berea Mid Park needs – it doesn't hurt them in the fact that if they win, they'll get t- they'll take care of business. If they win, they'll get in. If they don't, they'll just be like every other school. They won't be able to benefit from that. Now we need to re- remind everyone that Division One is going back to the four regions that the other – um, divisions two through seven already have and didn't change. And this proposal, again, that uh, came about from the uh, – it was jointly proposed by the Ohio High School Athletic Association and the Ohio High School Football Coaches Association, and then it was um, approved. So, um, you know, just changing it is is division one and, and yes, no other – it's actually going back – to how it was three years ago. Just to reiterate, if you guys already talked about that, um, and to mention again. Uh, when you guys look at you know how the regions are, can you see teams maybe scheduling a little bit differently uh, moving forward? Um, you know, Obviously, a lot of the schedules are probably in hand for the next few years, but um, as of right now, you know, if you're in a, a different region or you know, like Brunswick, um, ha- has a few different teams, and you, you don't know how it's going to go in year one with all the other teams and how they're going to do. But do you think scheduling changes? Maybe you can schedule, uh, you know, a team from your own region or or go to another region in region two and and just schedule some different teams in there. Uh, could that could maybe this have um, an impact on, on scheduling either tougher teams or or you know maybe some teams that they might get a win. Or nothing's a for sure win, but maybe some softer teams. It's going to depend on how your school is perceived around the area. Uh, I'll say that. I'll say from experience. I mean, you know, at Brunswick, you're not going to see. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get the games like we used to have, like when we played. So we played. I think we usually played a combination of John Marshall and Parma and Sandusky. Am I not? Am I not on? No, you're good. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, Brunswick has become, uh, you know, we've become a pretty good. We've become pretty good football at football over the last fifteen or so years. So those schools that need to get a, need to be able to to get a win aren't going to schedule us, or if they know they're they're if they know they're they have an uphill battle, they're probably not going to schedule us. Conversely, a team like St. Ed's and St. Ignatius wants to play us because we'll win our fair share of games usually. <sighs> However. W- no, I mean, we that's a, those are schools we don't particularly want to see until the playoffs, you know, because we know we're not going to be matched up in the best of ways, and you know, if we have to play them in the playoffs, that means we've done or some we've done something right in the regular season. So, um, I think there's a, I think there's a small chance, Rob, that that's going to change some scheduling, 
I'm not sure how flexible some of these schools are based on where what their reputations are. Um, like a Cuyahoga Falls, is it really going to matter? Probably not. You know, they yeah. went over, they went over in ten last year. Um, North Worlton, they struggled a little bit last year. Is it going to matter for them? Probably not. But those friend schools, like schools like Brunswick um, and St. Ed's, and, and I'll go with the St. Ed's and St. Ignatius route. They they it's tough for them to find Ohio schools to play because no one wants to play them. You know, in order to make the playoffs, they might need to schedule more. And I don't know how many more they can do, but they might have to schedule more not not out of state games. Yeah. Um, because those are the only teams that'll play them. You know, you think Stowe wants to play St. Ed's again? I don't. You know, yeah, I chances mean, chances are not not after the state semifinals last year. You know, no, f- and Stowe had a fantastic year yeah. last year. Yes, yeah. They did. Oh yeah, they did. I I personally don't think it's gonna change the scheduling of it. I think if anything, it just creates a different set, oh, a different way to s- to set your team up. Um, goal wise, now you can point to and say, "Look, these are the teams that we need to be better than in order to make the playoffs." It's no longer, it's not for seeding anymore. It's for making the playoffs, get us in, it, it, getting us into the playoffs in our region, and letting it hash out from there. I think it creates maybe some more opportunities for teams, and like, like Ed said, it's going to maybe weed out some of those five and five teams. They're still going to be there. There's still going to be a region that may not be as strong. And a five and five team does make the playoffs. I mean, that's just the nature of the game. Um, but I think I don't think it's going to affect actually scheduling because you still have to consider conference. You still have to. I mean, these kids are high school kids, so you yeah. still have to consider travel. You still have to consider you know your regional restrictions. I mean, obviously, like you mentioned with Saint Saint Ignatius, they want to go play everybody in the state because again, that helps them. But are they going to want to go and play Columbus every week? Or are they going to want to go and play you know? Maybe one or two times, sure, but they're not going to – I mean, they can't build a schedule around that, and that's the problem, again, when you compare the teams that are in the conference that aren't. I mean, St. Ed's and St. Ignatius in this area are kind of the outliers, whereas down in Cincinnati, they actually can build an entire league of Catholic schools and win the conference and still make playoffs. That's the problem, and St. Ignatius was felled by that last year because they played all the Parma schools, and mm-hmm. they got no points from them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I mean – I'm sure it took a little bit of incentive to have them play the Parma schools, but when you're looking at the end of the day, then St. Nations needed to win one or two games, of their big games, to get into the playoffs, and they weren't able to do it, and that's what cost them the playoffs last year. Ohio High School Athletic Association really needs to focus in the next in the coming years on fixing that problem. You have really great talent at these Catholic schools, and you need to bring them into the fold, and you need to make sure that all the teams that are in the public schools, you know, are willing to play. I, listen, I know there's a talent disparagement. I know that. But if you have a team like St. Ignatius that's blowing through the playoffs or, or St. Ed's is blowing through the playoffs or the Cincinnati Catholic schools that are blowing through the playoffs and they can't even play, reg- they're having trouble scheduling regular season games, that takes away from the competitive balance for the other teams. Um, so, I mean, that's my personal opinion. That's, that's my own editorial. Ohio High School Athletic Association needs to – Find something, some way, work it out with these teams to get these Catholic schools and the public schools together from a football standpoint and say, look, we need to come up with a conference. We need to do something so that we can keep teams playing in the state of Ohio. It's nice to have New Jersey teams come out and play because they want they want to come out and show that they're the best team. That's great. But it does nothing for this for the for our state playoffs. It does nothing for them. It, it's basically a scrimmage because it doesn't really count for them. It doesn't count against them, unless in the national rankings. So, I guess that's my that's my my gripe is yeah, it's nice that they re reorganized everything, but they still haven't fixed the main problem. Is that teams like St. Ignatius, St. Ed's are trying, and, and I don't feel bad for them. I'm not singing the swan song for them. I'm just saying it's just really aggravating for a fan of high school football to say, well, it's St. Ignatius, they're just going to win every year, and no teams want to play them. Well. That's not a good excuse anymore, and the Ohio High School Athletic Association needs to take it upon themselves and create some sort of competitive balance where I don't know if it's limiting what they can, what these Catholic schools can do in order to be eligible for Ohio State playoffs. I, I, I don't know, but I think something has to be done to where we're keeping – we're allowing these Catholic schools to play and, and, and giving an incentive for the public schools to play these Catholic schools and these Catholic schools to understand that they need – the public schools just as much as you know they think they they don't think they do. I it mean, can it can work in it has worked in hockey, right? Why can't it work in football? Exactly. On that note, 
uh want to thank ed for going over everything with that and, and sean duffy they did a heck of a job breaking that down and uh i'm sure we'll be talking some more high school sports and uh talk about some of those divisions uh in another broadcast but we're sports on tap part of the neo sports insiders network neo sports insiders.com i'm rob trauma for ed dick sean duffy josh jeffy i'm rob trauma from studio j signing off we'll see you later have a great week everyone